Hello there, and I'm George, and this is The Workbench, and tonight I've been asked to help a friend, and uh, for that I will be making something for amateur radio, um, something that's quite commonly misunderstood. Uh, in this case it will be a 4 to 1 ballon. Uh, a ballon is an unbalanced to balanced transformer. I'll try and say in that too quickly. Balanced to unbalanced. Um, well, it's actually the other way around, isn't it? It's unbalanced from your coax to a balanced antenna. And although I'm going to make a ballon the way it would be made, um, I'm not actually going to use sort of the recommended materials. I'm going to use what I have to hand because this is more of a demonstration than a this is what I've built for myself. Um, the, the whole point is to show how the wiring is done, how the windings are done, and basically just give you a rough idea. The materials we're going to use are, in this case, um, it's a T302 uh, toroid, although most of the time you won't need anything this big, your T200s will be fine. Uh, I'm going to use two different colours of enamelled copper wire. Um, this is, I think, one and a half mil, um, could even be two mil uh, square. Again, this is what I have to hand, um, and that's what we're going to use for that. Also, uh, might as well get it, some insulation tape, uh, whether I use the left, what's left on this blue, or start this roll of black, probably start the roll of black. Um, and that's, that's basically the materials you need. Uh, nice to haves are a somewhere in there uh, a PL259 socket and a pair of banana plugs on the end depending on how you actually plan to build the uh, the ballon if you plan to just solder it straight onto everything then you don't even need the coax connections you just need to solder two ends for your balanced output to your antenna and your unbalanced input straight to your coaxial cable you have to waterproof it quite well, um, I won't fail to mention that, and if you're going to build it into a box then obviously you will need connections to the outside world, but uh, on the whole it's cheap and easy to make, um, the materials there are certainly less than about £10, um, and that's for the bigger size toroid. If you're using a 200 toroid and a smaller amount of what or a smaller diameter wire um, it's a lot cheaper you only need about uh, three feet of wire um, for each side so six feet of wire in total if that um, I might actually measure it see what happens probably only need four feet of wire um, but yeah anyway let's get on with it and we'll go from there and see how it looks let's go over to the bench and start work Right, okay, so here we have a toroid. Um, in this case, it's a T300-2. Um, it will handle slightly more power than, say, a T200. Um, you can, if you want to go up to kilowatts, use a T400, uh, which is bigger across still. Um, but, as I say, I'm using what I have rather than... Um, what to buy and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the insulation tape and I'm going to start by pulling off a length cutting it off because you can't get the roll through the through the center and just wrap it round And the reason for doing this is so the enamel on the wire uh, doesn't short out with the powdered iron of the uh, the toroid itself. So just just feed it through, and uh, obviously you know the nicer you make it look, the nicer you make it look. Functionally, uh, it doesn't matter how it looks um, as long as it's on there. So uh, yeah. So you do that the whole way round. So give us a minute. I'll put this all together and then we can uh, 
carry on with that. So, back in a moment. Right, OK, so now we've got the toroid covered, we need to measure out our wire. And for that, we just need to, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, find the ends. Um, now this bench is a metre long, so I'm going to cut the metre off of this. Uh, let's find my cutters. These are probably not meant for this, but you know, hey ho, cheap Chinese. Let's get the other bit of wire, uh, find the end of that. Right, okay, so now we have, as you can hear, two rattly bits of long wire. Um, here's the other thing with balance. Everybody seems to think you need special wire and what have you. I've actually seen balance made with speaker cable um, or this sort of cable. Um, just, you know, red and black twin cable. Um, the only reason for using enameled copper wire is... Uh, you can get um, you know different thicknesses different diameters now the thicker the wire the harder it actually is to work with um, so for me this is going to be a bit of a pain in the bum but um, hey ho this is what I've got to hand as I say I could make it I've got some of this stuff laying around I could just go whoop 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 whoop, whoop and job done um, but this will show you the the way way I you know, sort of do it myself. Now, the first thing to do is get your first turn on, and any time the wire passes through the center, through the center, is counted as a turn. So that would be one turn. Now this is where you, this is where it gets you know to be a pain in the bum, and you have to try and keep the wire together. So that's two turns, and let's see if we can get three out of this end. And if you keep them as parallel as possible and as tight together as possible, then you can spread them out nice and evenly, and you, you keep the sides sort of round the same way. So, what have we got? One, two. One, two, three. This will be number four. So you do this until you've got your 13 turns on. Again, I think I'm going to uh, pause and uh, work on this in, you know, sort of off camera. It, it's going to be hard for you to watch me forcing bits of wire through a hole. Um, you know, it's, it's, as I say, the thicker wire is much harder to work with. So, you know. As I say, this is what I had laying around, which is why I'm using it. Otherwise, yeah, there you go, crashing against microphones, long bits of wire. Otherwise, I'd use something else completely. Um, but it, it, because I have the two colours, it makes it easier to see what's going on. So, again, back in a moment, and we shall uh, put that together. Right, see you soon. Right, OK, so here we are back again, and I actually overestimated the wire by about um, by about 6, 8 inches. So there we go. You could probably get away with two feet of wire on a smaller coil. Now, as you see, this isn't as evenly spaced or as tight or as, uh, as uh, anything that it should be, and I've made a mistake on it where I've crossed the wires over. Obviously you won't make that mistake, will you? Um, so anyway, this is the sort of what you'll end up with once you've put your wires in and you'll end up with two ends, um, you know, two gold ends and in this case two red ends. Now what you want to do 
is choose which end is your input and start from there. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this will be my input and what I need to do is I'll trace because you've got the two colors you'll go through and the end of this has to connect to the other end of this one so those two will connect these will then go off to your co uh, off to your coax connector so we said this end was going to the coax so this end will be the coax and this will be your balanced output going to your antenna now what you must do is you must join these together properly okay so this is your coax this would be your input now in the old days of 75 ohm coax you put 75 ohms in here you'd get 300 ohms here today we use 50 ohm coax 50 ohms in here gives you about 200 ohms here now that should get you close enough with something like a delta loop um, I know they want about 120 um, up to 150 ohms um, putting 200 ohms onto it or thereabouts is going to get you in the ballpark if nothing else so you're not going to have any trouble matching it with you know sort of most most ATUs should be able to handle that quite well um, some of the auto ATUs may not but um, you know, I haven't used an auto ATU for a long time and uh, it's more fun using a manual anyway. Uh, you usually get a wider range of matching. But there we go. So that is that is the simple way to make a ballon. Um, and if you can imagine, as I say, your coax is here, your antenna's here. It's as simple as that. Hope that you found this interesting. Um, if you have, like and subscribe. If you haven't, um, tell me what I've done wrong. And... Uh, Yes, I know it's rough and ready. Yes, I know it's a bit of a mess, um, but this is a bit of a rush job. Um, and it's only done to show the principle. I, as I said, I've not done this to be an accurate ballon um, because I, I have no need to make one, to be quite honest. Um, I already have my own one in the, in the garden. It's been there for quite a long time. Um, but yes, there we go. A ballon, and it works very very well. Thanks very much for watching. See you all soon. Bye bye for now.